Perhaps because of my birth and mixed nationality, I always felt a little uncertain as to where I belonged. And I was always looking for some place where I would feel at home. He always had a sense of civic purpose. He was interested in sculpture because he was a civilization builder. His time in New York in the early to mid-1930s was really marked by his active engagement in social activism and thinking with other artists about how art could be a force for social change. In the 1930s, he began to get very involved with the Public Works of Art program. He was uh, proposing land art from the early 30s on, none of which were built. So he, he was looking for opportunities to make work that was at the center of civic life. Yesterday, December 7th, 1941, a date which will live in infamy. Pressure from West Coast political and business leaders, the War Department and the Army eventually convinced President Roosevelt to sign Executive Order 9066 on February 19, 1942, which authorized the War Department to move all Japanese Americans from the West Coast states. So there was about 110,000 men, women, and children who were forcibly removed from their homes from these areas. Noguchi was the only voluntary internee at the post in camp. He realized that he was a Nisei, Japanese-American, whereas up until then, he was an avant-garde artist traveling more in Europe and New York and very little to do with the Nisei world. Officials in D.C. promised Noguchi that he would be able to come to Poston, that he would be able to start an art program, that he would have materials, he would have supplies, he would have space. He had this plan for a public swath of services that included parks and gardens and a proper cemetery and a miniature golf course and baseball, you know, everything that you would expect to have in a great American city. He really thought that good design could fix anything. Initially, all of the planning was happening in the Bureau of Indian Affairs. By the time the internment camps were actually founded, they ended up in the War Department. So the War Department chose to execute them as prison camps. He arrived thinking that he was going to be able to build an art program, and when he realized quite quickly within the first several weeks that the program might not have the kind of materials or facilities that he had envisioned, he became very quickly disillusioned. He realized he shared absolutely nothing in common with the Issei. There was no community there for him, and he realized that he'd parachuted into a world of alienation and that he was ironically totally alienated from it. You know, Isamu, avant-garde, internationally known. Most of the Niseis were very conventional, you know, and they didn't understand Isamu coming from another whole other world, so I don't think he got along very well with the Nisei in camp. He realized he couldn't really do much, and so he wanted to leave. The whole experience was incredibly disillusioning for him. The experience of Poston for Noguchi was intense and followed him for the rest of his life. No question he came out of the camp very depressed. He was able to get a leave of absence or furlough and he never returned, so he's been AWOL ever since then. He was under surveillance during this period. Noguchi was part of a group of artists and writers who had often been under surveillance. His mailman was, in fact, an informant for the FBI, and that's something that really affected him greatly during this period. He wanted to shape the curve of an abstract form but the whole time he was doing it, it felt wrong. That depression would build and then manifest itself really ultimately in a desire 
to stop making discrete things and find a way to reconnect sculpture with society in a way that could make his life's work worthwhile. He was working in his studio in Greenwich Village and he began to make sculptures that seemed to engage directly with the texture of the desert landscape. At the same time, a work such as This Tortured Earth was a much more overt and explicit engagement with the earth as a kind of victim, as a traumatized space. He made a, a beautiful piece that feels like it's sort of barely held together and will blow away with the slightest breeze. Abstraction for Noguchi enabled him to speak about the experience and the trauma of the war in ways that couldn't be pinned down and labeled. He began to make sculptures that could be taken down and put back up in ways that mimicked the relocation process itself. We call them the interlocking sculptures, and they're ones that he made out of flat sheet materials, mostly stone, because they can be collapsed, they can be bundled up, they can be thrown over the shoulder. You know, that idea again that internees were only allowed what they could carry. And in some ways, these are the perfect internment sculptures. And there's a really interesting example of this that is the table design that he made in 1944 and 1945. I think that this table is a kind of mass cultural design that takes the language of relocation and refugee movement around the world and puts it into an actual object of design. 